Did you know that every six seconds a person dies from a stroke in the world? The brain is the most important organ in the human body. It allows us to think, feel, have memories, move, and coordinate all the things that make us human. Imagine losing all of this in a moment when someone has a stroke or a cerebrovascular accident, CVA. Did you know that 20 to 30% of strokes have no cause? We call this cryptogenic stroke. In this video, I will talk about the causeless stroke or cryptogenic stroke and why it is important for you. Stroke is the second leading cause of death in the world. Even worse, it is a disease that leaves a person disabled because it affects the brain. Of those who survive, many are left with some sequelae in a wheelchair, unable to speak or express themselves, losing vision or coordination. Stroke is the leading cause of preventable disability. It's very sad. Therefore, the most important thing is to know how to prevent it. Even a stroke without a cause can be prevented. And by the end of the video, you will learn how, 7 measures you can take to reduce your chances of having a stroke. But first, start by liking the video. The more likes, the more YouTube recognizes the video as relevant and distributes it so people become aware. So help out. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Activate the bell to receive notifications and share this knowledge with your friends and family. Prevention is the best way to avoid a stroke and many lives can be saved with your help. Tell me, have you had a stroke or do you know someone who has? Where in the world are you from? Write it down below. Let's go. What is a stroke or cerebrovascular accident, CVA? Stroke is a medical emergency and urgent treatment is essential. The sooner a person receives treatment for a stroke, the lower the likelihood of sequelae. There are two types of strokes. The stroke can be caused by a clot, the ischemic stroke, which blocks blood flow in an area of the brain. This is the most common type, about 80% of cases. And the other type is hemorrhagic stroke, around 20% of cases caused by the rupture of a cerebral blood vessel or an aneurysm. Both are serious, both can cause sequelae, and both can be prevented. We also have TIA, or transient ischemic attack, which is a mini-stroke. There was probably a clot, but the body managed to dissolve it, so it lasts a few minutes or hours and leaves no sequelae, it resolves completely. What are the seven most common causes of a stroke? Do you know? The first cause is high blood pressure. Hypertension is by far the main risk factor for a stroke. Just having high blood pressure increases your risk of having a stroke by 200 to 400 percent. That's why I emphasize so much on the channel that it's very important to control your blood pressure. Try lifestyle change measures. Lose weight. Eat more fruits and vegetables. Reduce salt and sugar intake. All of this helps. But if, despite all the measures, you cannot keep your blood pressure in range, you need to take medication. It's better to take medication than to have a stroke. Controlling blood pressure also helps prevent heart diseases like heart attacks, arrhythmias, and heart failure, and also prevents kidney diseases. The second cause is heart disease. Which heart diseases? Several, from heart arrhythmias. The main arrhythmia that causes stroke is atrial fibrillation. This I have to emphasize as much as hypertension. Atrial fibrillation increases the risk of stroke by over 500%, or 5 to 6 times. Why? Because in atrial fibrillation, the atrium does not contract coordinately, it quivers, fibrillates, looks like a bag of worms. And inside it, the blood clots, forming thrombi that can break off, embolize to the head, and cause a stroke. This clot will block blood flow, and cause a stroke. Therefore, in most cases of atrial fibrillation, we treat with anticoagulants. To prevent the blood from clotting in the atrium or to dissolve an existing thrombus and prevent a stroke. But is atrial fibrillation the only cause of a stroke? No. Heart valve defects, when the heart is dilated or weak, can enlarge the heart chambers and result in blood clots that, again, can break off and block an artery in the brain. Other heart causes like a patent foramen ovale, 
PFO, can also increase the risk of having a stroke. The third cause is atherosclerosis, which is the formation of plaques in the arteries. It can be plaques in the carotid arteries, in the vertebral arteries, or in the arteries that supply the brain. The fourth cause is smoking. Smoking doubles the risk of an ischemic stroke and cerebral stroke and quadruples the risk of a hemorrhagic stroke. Cigarettes cause inflammation, increase the risk of atherosclerosis, which is the formation of fat plaques in the carotid and brain. Additionally, nicotine raises blood pressure, and cigarette smoke makes the blood thicker, more prone to clotting. And, as you might imagine, it increases the risk of aneurysms. The fifth cause is diabetes. Yes, high blood sugar damages the blood vessels throughout the body, including those in the brain. And worse, if you have a stroke and your glucose levels are high, the size of the damaged area, the extent, and the severity will be greater than if your glucose is well controlled. The sixth cause is high cholesterol. Both high LDL, bad cholesterol, and low HDL, good cholesterol, increase the risk of stroke. Don't be fooled by people who say high cholesterol causes nothing, it's a myth. High cholesterol increases atherosclerosis, which causes strokes and heart attacks. The seventh cause is sedentary lifestyle and obesity. Physical inactivity and obesity are associated with hypertension, diabetes, and heart diseases. So, you need to move, at least walk. If your abdominal circumference is over 88 cm in women and 102 cm in men, your risk of ischemic stroke triples. Are there other causes? Yes, like alcoholism and drug use such as cocaine, but these are less frequent than the seven causes I just mentioned. And here I must warn you that if you have had a previous stroke or TIE, your risk of stroke increases. So, what is a cryptogenic stroke or a causeless stroke? It is when there is no apparent cause, you do an ECG and don't have atrial fibrillation, you don't smoke, you don't have high blood pressure, you don't have heart disease, you exercise, and yet you had a stroke. In 20 to 30 percent of strokes, we cannot discover the cause in the initial evaluation. But it is important to investigate because identifying the cause can allow for more effective treatment to prevent recurrence. Just because the cause was not discovered doesn't mean there isn't one. Stroke doesn't come out of nowhere. There are usually hidden sources of embolism. So, probably, one of those seven causes I mentioned is behind this stroke. For example, atrial fibrillation may not have appeared on the ECG or Holter, but if the person uses a loop monitor for many days, it can be detected. Or if a more detailed CT angiography is done, it can be seen that there is atherosclerosis inside the cerebral arteries. The person thinks they don't have high blood pressure, but they were having pressure spikes. Do you know the symptoms of a stroke you should be alert to? Stroke appears suddenly. The person was talking and suddenly started feeling dizzy, headache, difficulty speaking, weakness, or paralysis in part of the body. So, the symptoms appear suddenly. If you think your friend or family member is having a stroke, or you yourself, ask the person to smile. Is one side of the mouth not smiling? Is one side of the face paralyzed or drooping? It could be a stroke. Can the person raise both arms to give you a hug? Or is one of them weak or paralyzed? If they can't raise it, it's another sign. Ask the person to sing a common song. It could be a song or ask them to repeat a simple phrase. Is the speech slurred or strange? Something is wrong. The faster you get to the hospital, the more likely the person is to recover without sequelae. Don't wait for the symptoms to pass. Call EMS or take a taxi, an Uber, and go to the emergency room as quickly as possible. And there, get the doctor's or nurse's attention. Don't stay in line. Time is brain and see how complicated this is. In the United States, where data is reliable and stroke affects about 800,000 people a year, only a quarter of those patients are eligible to receive one of the two treatments that could fully recover brain function, an injection of altaplace or TPA that dissolves the clot, or mechanical thrombectomy, 
which removes the blood clot in the brain like a heart catheterization. Only one in four. Either they took too long to recognize the stroke and pass the time window. Usually, this window is four and a half hours from the onset of symptoms to start treatment. Or the person went to sleep at 10 at night and woke up like this at 8 in the morning. The wake-up stroke. Or they waited to get better and didn't. Or the hospital was too far. Or they didn't have access to transportation. Something happened. So, if a family member shows stroke symptoms, go to the hospital. This is the best way to prevent sequelae from a stroke that has already occurred. But it would be better to prevent a stroke from happening. And this is the most important part of the video, so pay attention. A July 2022 publication from the Journal of the American Heart Association shows that seven habits can effectively prevent a stroke, even in those with high genetic risk. They can reduce your chances by up to 43%. How to do this? We have to target the risk factors for stroke. This study confirms that by changing lifestyle and targeting risk factors, one can overcome the genetic factor of having a stroke. Want to avoid a stroke? What are the seven habits? Habit number seven, stop smoking. Nearly 20% of stroke cases are related to smoking. If you want to be healthy, cigarettes are the enemy of that goal. Quit smoking today, or gradually reduce it over 15 days until you stop completely. Habit number six, exercise regularly. Regular exercise reduces the risk of stroke. Walk, bike, swim, do something you enjoy and can maintain long term. Besides reducing the risk of stroke, physical exercise lowers your blood pressure, your risk of diabetes, treats anxiety, and depression. The best would be to alternate strength training with aerobic exercises. Habit number five, maintain a healthy weight. Excess weight burdens all your blood vessels, besides being closely linked to diabetes and hypertension. The worst fat is the abdominal fat. So measure your abdominal circumference, and if it's over the limit, lose weight. Habit number four, follow a balanced diet. Lots of fruits, vegetables that nourish your body with vitamins, minerals, and flavonoids. Increase the consumption of healthy plant and animal proteins like chicken and fish. A balanced diet reduces your risk of having a stroke. Habit number three, lower your cholesterol. Eat more oats, reduce trans and saturated fats, lose weight, consume more fiber, exercise. And if, despite doing everything right, you can't reduce it, take medications. 80% of cholesterol is manufactured by the liver. This study showed that those who reduced their cholesterol also reduced their risk of stroke. Is it worth the risk? Habit number two, Keep your glucose in range. Monitor your glucose levels and treat them correctly to reduce your risk of stroke. Uncontrolled diabetes increases the risk of stroke by two to four times. Habit number one, control your blood pressure. Since hypertension is the leading cause of stroke, controlling it correctly may be the best cost benefit. Your goal is to maintain blood pressure below 120 over 80. For some, a less aggressive goal, like not exceeding 140 over 90, may be more suitable. How to achieve this? Reduce salt intake in your diet or switch to light salt if you have no contraindications. Avoid processed foods that have a lot of salt and sugar. Eat 4 to 5 servings of fruits and vegetables every day, besides whole grains and low-fat dairy products. Exercise more at least 150 minutes a week. And lose weight if your BMI is high. So, by following these seven habits well, you reduce your probability of having a stroke by over 40%. And if you have atrial fibrillation, you need to treat it correctly. And if you have been prescribed an anticoagulant, you should take it. If you drink, you need to reduce alcohol consumption. Now, if you have already had a stroke, Besides these seven habits, I suggest you read a book called The Brain That Changes Itself by Norman Deutsch. Fantastic. I think I've read it about three times. It brings a lot of valuable information.
More than that, it brings hope to anyone with brain damage or knows someone who has. The brain is very similar to the rest of the body in that, when damaged, it has the power to regenerate, and an enormous amount of function can be restored with the right approach. It's worth reading that book. Did you like the video? Remember to subscribe. And see you in the next video.